Hello and welcome to my brand new series, Making It Happen, hosted by yours truly. And what better way to kickstart this series than to come to this absolutely awesome venue. The venue in question is Acton Bernal. There's two lakes on the complex. You've got the lower lake and you've got the top lake. The top lake is where I'm standing now and this is probably gonna be the one that I'm gonna have a go on first. The lakes are situated in the deepest, darkest countryside of Shropshire. And as you can see behind, a nice big pine forest as the backdrop. It's mid spring now, so time is against us as we didn't arrive until early evening and I've never actually been to this complex before. So I've managed to gather a little bit of information prior to turning up. What I'm gonna do for the first night is just go on my gut instinct. So I'm gonna have a little walk round now. The wind is pushing down the far end. This time of year, fish tend to follow the wind. So my gut is telling me, have a look down there first, but I'm gonna have a look round. Hopefully I can see something showing, but if I don't, I'm just gonna set up where I think will possibly be the best chance of a bite. If not, a good vantage point so I can have a look across the lake sort of overnight, early morning. And then fingers crossed, by the morning, if something's shown or something's happened, I can formulate a bit of a plan. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's get walking and hopefully find a few fish. Well, I've had a walk round now. Um, I've probably been walking around for about an hour, but like I said, the light is fading fast. I'm pretty sure that I've actually seen a fish show. Um, but like I said, going on gut instinct, I'm gonna go in the peg where I'm standing now. Now it's at the very far end of the lake. Um, and again, for what little I do know about the lake, the furthest end's the dam. This end, I think, is the shallowest end, which is only about four or five feet. But with the weather we've got and the conditions that we've got now and the time of year, it probably isn't a bad starting point. We've got warm daytime temperatures, it's shallow water down there, and even though overnight it's quite cold, the water down here will stay warm with that nice breeze pushing in. And I'm hoping that this is gonna be the place where I can potentially catch my first Acton carp. Um, I don't know what's out there on the bottom. The only way I'm gonna find that out is to uh, whisk to the van. I'm gonna grab the waders, the peg's very, very tight. I won't actually be able to cast from the bank. I'm gonna to have to cast from within the water. So I'm gonna get the waders on, grab the, uh, the spawn rod, flick a lead out. Hopefully I can find a spot without too much disturbance. And this is where I'm gonna nestle in for the first night. So fingers crossed I can find somewhere to fish and uh, yeah, get a few rods out. It was almost dark and time was really against me to find a spot. But luckily after only a few casts, I found an area that was perfect for presenting two rigs for the night. Well, as I expected, it is extremely shallow down this end. I'm only using a light lead here on the spawn rod to try and fill for a spot, and I'm actually struggling to pick up a drop. I'm guessing it's somewhere in the region of four, four and a half feet. Now, I found a clear spot. It's a really, really clear spot. It's gravel, in fact. Majority of the lake bed seems to be covered in a real low-lying siltweed, which can be very hard to present over. Certainly when you're bait fishing, if the fish are moving that siltweed around, it can very, very quickly tangle up your, uh, your rig and just make your presentation very hard for the carp to find. So the spot I found is a really, really nice clear gravel spot. Not only that, whilst I was out in the water having a lead around, I did see a proper carp. Not saying that the one I saw before wasn't a proper carp, but I actually visibly saw this one with my own eyes, poke it set out about 30 to 40 yards behind where I'm fishing. That's a really good sign. The light is fading fast now, so I'm quickly gonna get my rods out, put a bit of bait over the top, and uh, come tomorrow, I'll run you through exactly what I put out tonight. Hopefully, I can show you a carp as well. I clicked on two Illusion D rigs and got them out on the spot perfectly. It was shallow, but I knew the spot was clear, so it was a simple case of clipping on the bobbin and getting some bait over the top. I opted to put out just a few spawns of krill active boilers to start, as I didn't want to make too much disturbance before getting some dinner on the go. Well, new series, new me. Got a lovely vegetable medley here to go with my chicken and my noodles. Um, rods are out. They went out first time, absolutely bang on. I'm only fishing 14 and a half rod lengths. And uh, yeah, like I was saying before, it's a nice little clear gravel area in amongst some real dense, um, sort of horrible low-lying silkweed. I put 10 spawns of bait over the top. And yeah, just sort of see what happens. I haven't seen anything else show. Um, the wind sort of blowing into me, so that will sort of aid um, hearing things through the night because obviously the wind will blow the, uh, will blow the sound sort of my way. So I'm gonna have this. I'm gonna start for a, a few hours and have a listen. Um, but failing that, if I don't hear anything, I'm gonna get my head down. I'm gonna set my alarm for sort of half four, quarter to five, 
about an hour, hour and a half before it gets light. I'm gonna get up, make a coffee, and hopefully I can uh, and see a couple show. Because normally, wherever you see them showing, it's first thing in the morning, is obviously where they venture to overnight. So if they're not gonna, if they're not showing it on me, maybe they're showing at the other end, and I know then that's a good indicator that maybe tomorrow night up sticks and move. But for now, I've done everything. The fish have been fed. Hopefully they want to eat. But yeah, all I've got to do now is eat my dinner. Well, unfortunately, nothing uh, escalated through the night. I did stay awake a couple of hours into darkness. It's deadly, deadly silent here, and I only heard a couple of fish, um, and one of those could have potentially been a pike slapping just down in the margin. But yeah, nothing happened. I woke up first light this morning, expecting them to put on a little bit of a display. The sun rises on, from the trees right in front of us, so it's right in our face, so it's warming this part of the water up. Um, almost straight away, but I was looking out for a couple of hours and, ha and haven't actually seen anything. So yeah, it's a bit of a uh, a bit of a weird one at the minute. But with this end being the shallow end, obviously we wasn't here at this time yesterday. And uh, this time of year, the fish will always sort of go to the shallows, follow where the sun's going, and sort of generally just try and get as much warmth into them as they possibly can. So I'm not going to move from here just because I didn't catch last night because maybe this is a you know a, a, a day by end. And I have had a look at some of the pictures sort of prior to coming here and there's a lot more daytime shots than what there is night shots. So straight away that's telling me that maybe night isn't going to be the best time to catch them. So the rods are still in position from last night. It's, uh, it's just gone eight o'clock now. I'm going to have myself a little bit of breakfast and I'll probably redo those about 10. The wind's just started picking up. It does look really, really good. But yeah, I'm just going to sort of keep everything crossed, have a rechuck. And if anything sort of happens through the day, if they don't turn up here, say by midday, one o'clock, I'm going to crank the rods and I'm going to go for a little look around and try and find them somewhere else. But for now, me personally, I don't think there's a, a better place that I'd rather be sitting than on the end of this wind with the sun beating down. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'll have a bit of breakfast and hopefully something happens. Right, well, as you can see, I'm uh, in the chesties. I was out in the water actually having a look the margins to the left and right, there's quite a lot of trees, and I was sort of seeing if there was any fish got in close and the sun's beating down over here onto our margin here. And uh, literally, as I'm out here, the right hand rod over the bait, or the bait that I put out last night, done a, a real slow drop back, and then all of a sudden, yeah, just burst into life, and I've got my very first Acton Burnell fish on. I don't know the size of it, I've not seen it yet, but all I know is a first bite from the new water. There is no feeling like it. Oh, it's a tench. <laughs> that was a hell of a scrap that did for a tench. Bloody things. But it's a bite, it's a start. Well, I suppose even though it was a tench, it just shows that the spot that I found was clear enough to present me bait all night. Um, and yeah, it's like a lot of places that I fish that have got bream and tench, and if you can catch a bream or a tench, you can always catch a carp. So yeah, as much as it's a little bit, uh, a little bit annoying to have uh, got a decent take off of a, uh, a tench thinking it was a carp, there is still hope. And I think now that it's warming up a little bit more, um, maybe, you know, since it has warmed up, that's the reason the tench have come down and had a feed. And there's no way that if carp see tench feeding, they're not going to come over and have a little look. So yeah, it's definitely, um, it's definitely sort of made me want to uh, stick out here for a few more hours. So I'm going to bring the other rod in that's on the bait, redo both of them. I'm just going to, just going to drop a couple more spawns over the top. Not many, two or three, um, and leave it. It's just sort of just gone 10 o'clock now. So the sun's sort of just coming up to its highest point. And uh, yeah, you can really feel the warmth in it. So I'm hoping but yeah, now I've had a bite off the spot, I know that the spot can do a bite of some description that the next one's going to be a carp. So yeah, I'm going to get this one, retied it, blunted the hook, and uh, get it back out there. Yeah, a little bit more bait over the top, see what happens. 
I tied a fresh rig and wrapped up the rod, confident the cart would visit the spot and push out the tench at any moment. I was still only using two rods as the spot wasn't quite big enough for a third, but the third rod was ready to be cast to any showing fish. With both rods back out on the money, my eyes were glued on the water for any signs of fish, and it didn't take long to notice the odd carp enjoying the morning sun. Right, well, I've just been stood out in the water, um, and in the last sort of half hour or so, the wind's picked up quite strong now, and while I was stood out there, the, the only part of the lake that I can't really see when I'm sat back in the swim is around to the right, and uh, as I look around there, I see one poke its head out. Now, it didn't look a very big fish, but it's the first fish that I've seen poke its head out since the hours of daylight. So I've rigged the third rod up and I've got it on a hinge stiff rig. I've got it really slow sinking, so I'm not adding any additional weight to the rig. I'm just using the buoyancy to pop up to sort of slowly sink the rig. Um, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wade out and I'm gonna flick it out. I don't know what's on the bottom. Judging by the rest of the lake, there's probably a little bit of silkweed out there, but I'm gonna fire this out as a single. Classic spring tactics, see a fish show, put a single on its head. And uh, yeah, let's see what happens. So I'm gonna get it out now, launch it out, and hopefully it, uh, it produces the goods. I only wanted to make a single cast as to not disturb the fish that were already present. Feeling the lead down, it felt slightly soft on top of the silkweed, but I knew that the hinge stiff rig would be presented well. I clipped on the bobbin and sat down, enjoying the afternoon sun and stunning surroundings that Acton Bernal had to offer. The right hand rod is out on a hinge stiff rig. That's just chucked out to a showing fish. I'm a little bit unsure of what the bottom's like out there. So that's the best presentation that I can put over to where I've seen a couple of fish. But the spot that I found is very, very clear. And the rig that I'm using on top of that spot is this. Now it's an Illusion D rig. I've used it for now coming up for two, two and a half years. And it very, very rarely lets me down. And when you're fishing on a clear spot like I am, I personally think that there isn't a better presentation that you can use. It's an extremely versatile rig. I can use an array of hook baits, little clusters of maggots with a bit of foam, double plastic corn, wafters, double bottom bait, you name it, provided it's not a pop-up, you can put on this rig and you can be guaranteed that it's fishing. Now the rig itself is very, very simple to construct and it's made up of just a few components. First things first, 19 pound illusion. It's very strong, it's never let me down and it's totally inconspicuous to the carp. And all you're doing is I'm not this knotting a size four wide gate beak on the end and leaving a tag end of two to three inches sticking out. And that is to attach the micro hook ring swivel. Poke it through the ring swivel end, pass it back through the eye of the hook, simply blob it down with a lighter and you can choose how big you would like the D. And then from there, simply slide on an anti-tangle sleeve and then you can set the rig to your desired length. Me personally, I like to use this rig fairly long, between 12 and 16 inches. Now the reason for that is, is I don't actually want this rig to sit dead straight when it's on the bottom. I want it to be a slight coil in it, so when the fish picks it up, it goes up into the fish's mouth before it feels any resistance onto the lead. So this one here is about 12 inches in length, and this one's ready to go. And then there's a case of putting on your hook bait. This time around, I've just gone for a 16 mil wafter that I've trimmed down ever so slightly, and that there will just sit up and the hook will sort of just fall like that, just below it. And that is the rig. Very, very simple, very, very effective, and it never, ever lets me down. Literally out of the blue, the right arm rod that I chucked around as a single on a hinge stiff rig, it just absolutely ripped off. And I'm in to my first Acton carp. This is definitely a carp, it's not a tench. It's having a right old fight, I'm not sure of the size. It's quite a shallow lake, it's quite a long way from where I've hooked it, but I'm into a carp. So I'm gonna focus on getting this in. It's gone over my other two rods just out in the open water. Oh, my heart's racing. There he is. 
That's the little pop up. Yes. Yes. Now we might not be anywhere near the 50 pound lake record size, but let me tell you what a relief that is. First bite from a new lake. Oh, mega, 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 mega. I've literally just popped the hook out of that fish, checked it. The hook bait's not been out there that long. Still got plenty of buoyancy left in it. The hook's nice and sharp. And uh, just before I was about to start talking to camera, one showed not far off where I've just took this one. So I'm gonna flick this back out and uh, sort of into the trail of bubbles where that fish has just jumped, jumped out. All right, don't mess this up. Very, very shallow, struggling to find a drop there. But one of the biggest mistakes I see a lot of people make is they spend 16, 18, 20 hours waiting to catch a fish. And then when they catch one, they're not prepared to, uh, to get the rod back out straight away. Like a lot of lakes I fish, and I should imagine this is no different. The fish move around in numbers. And normally where there's one, there's a lot more. And uh, the amount of times I've caught a fish, the fish is nice and secure and they chuck the rod back out and it goes within sort of minutes of putting it back out and they're fish that you wouldn't have caught. So hopefully by doing this, it goes off again, but it always pays to have a rig ready, like to go as soon as you've got the, uh, the fish in the net. How about that? My very first Acton Burnell top lake carp. Now this series, it isn't about going somewhere and give it an absolute hammering. It's about going to places that I've never been before, no minimal information about, and just going somewhere and making it happen. And this fish proves that. I went in with my usual two rods on the spot, a little bit of bait over the top that I know works absolutely everywhere, but it wasn't happening. And it just shows that by having different sorts of rigs, and tactics in your armory and trying something a little bit outside your comfort zone and taking a punt at a showing fish can pay dividends. And this one here, honestly, I cannot even describe to you how happy I am. It might not be breaking any records, but for me, it's my very first carp from Acton and it's my first carp for the series. With 24 hours of the session left to go, a move was looking like it was gonna be on the cars, but you know what? The fish seem to have turned up down in this corner in numbers as well. The water has changed massively since we've got here. It's warmed up a lot overnight and the fish are certainly loving it. So I'm going to take one of my rods off of the baited area and I'm going to put two out to the right on hinge stiff rigs. And hopefully this isn't the last carp, but if it is, what a stunning, stunning carp. Result. Result. With the fish returned, I decided to have a recast just to ensure my other rod was presented well. Spring was in full force and although the wind had a chill to it, the sun was definitely winning. To my surprise, it didn't take long until the right hand rod was away yet again. rod that I've literally just chucked out that I've taken off the baited area has, uh, has just ripped off. I had a liner on the middle one which is uh, fished to the same sort of area about 10 minutes before and I don't reckon this has been out there 15-20 minutes. Like I said exactly the same presentation, a long, well a long boomed in stiff rig, whittled down, yellow pop up, perfectly balanced into the zone and yeah we've got ourselves another car pop. Up. 
and a good old scrap this one is. Just gone underneath my other two rods, so I've passed this rod underneath. It's not far out now, 10 yards maybe. I don't know why I'll go there. I don't want to give up. It feels a sort of similar stamp to the, the first one, but like anything, the more you chip away at a few, eventually the bigger ones will be there. I've seen bigger fish show in this bay, so I know the bigger ones are sort of in amongst these stockies. But you have got probably a dozen or so fish, over 40 pounds in here, so you really don't know. goes. Yes! Number two. I think this one just goes to show that no matter how much you try and sort of preempt a session and how it's going to go and the tactic that you're going to go in with, always have other bits and bobs in your armoury because up until a couple of hours ago, um, not that it wasn't looking great, but it wasn't happening over the bait. By having a hinge stiff rigs, the ready tight chod is at my disposal. I could get rigs that could fish effectively out to where the fish are and in the last few hours it's completely turned the session around and uh, this one is another uh, another one of similar sort of size to the first one but it's fish number two and uh, yeah what a glorious glorious evening it's turning out to be. I'm going to try and pop the hook out here. Just going to grab the fish, there we go. Smack bang centre at the bottom lip. Nice and easy to pop the hook out, find the way the hook's gone in finger on the eye and just pop him straight out. There we go. And there's the rig. Really long boom. I don't really know if you can see that. Really, really long boom. Nice whittled down yellow. I'm gonna keep this fish in the net, secure him down nice and tight and get that back out there. Just where the trees end is where it's nice. There he is, carp number two. Slightly smaller than the first one, but you know what? I honestly really do not care. And it's quite nice now because um, I'm gonna stay where I am and I'm gonna formulate well, I formulated a little bit of a plan. I'm going to leave one on the baited spot, two hinge stiff rigs out to the right. I never fished out there last night, so what's to say the fish wasn't out there last night? Who knows? But um, if tomorrow is anything like it was today, they certainly turned up there late afternoon, evening. So it's nice to have uh, sort of found out a little bit of a pattern as to what the fish do. But yeah, two fish with 18 hours left to go. Who knows what the next one could be? With two fish caught that afternoon, my confidence going into the night was high. Although they were both mid to upper doubles, the thought of a potential 50 pounder was all too exciting and I decided to put some more bait over the spot I'd found, hoping I'd move in on the second night. I also recast the rod on the bait to ensure everything was perfect should the carp move in. With the rod sorted, it was time for some grub before getting my head down for the night. Unfortunately, nothing else happened through the hours of darkness um, other than the fact that I had a very, very good night's sleep. I woke up early this morning and uh, no surprise, I'd seen a couple of fish show quite a way up the lake. Pretty similar to what they did yesterday, but sort of hoping today that they follow the same pattern as what they did. And they didn't turn up in front of me yesterday till about 11, 12 o'clock. So I'm gonna bring the rods in, fresh baits, re-chuck them. I'm gonna get them back out into position. I'm gonna pack 
all my kit away, get it loaded into the van, and I'm literally just gonna have my rods and my holdall and my chest waders out. So should I see fish showing up the other end past sort of 11, 12 o'clock, I can quickly wind them in and make a move. But for now, I'm gonna bring them in, rebait them, get them back out there, and fingers crossed they turn back up. The rest of the morning was quiet and the fish continued to show long to my right. With only an afternoon left, I made the decision to reel in and move down to get on them. So this is the new peg. Um, it's the pine forest side of the lake, so that's the far side as you drive in. And I'm guessing from where I am, um, this is roughly where they've been shown. It's probably two, two and a half hundred yards up the lake from where I am. It's very hard to gauge, but it's quite a wide open swim. So I've got my three singles here. I'm not gonna put them tight. I'm just gonna fan them around in the peg. And if something shows, I'm gonna reel one in and drop it on its head. So fingers crossed, a couple of hours in here may produce the goods. With only a few hours left, I found the three rods across the swim. The bottom was covered in a fine silkweed, but the hinge stiff rig presentation would enable the rig to present over the top. I didn't put any bait out as I didn't want to spook the fish with so little time remaining, and all I could do was wait it out, hoping I could nick one last bite. After half an hour, a fish showed again, giving away the exact location, so I frantically reeled in one of the rods and cast into the disappearing rings. I hadn't even turned the alarm back on and was just sorting another rod when I realised I'd had a take. Got a bite, Brad. Well, they say it's not over until the fat lady sings and uh, she's certainly not singing just yet. A move a swim, a couple of singles deployed onto roughly where I'd seen them, 10 minutes left hand rods away. Literally we must have half an hour, 45 minutes until we got to be off. This is the left hand rod that went and it's probably only about 25 yards from the bank. It's quite a lot of overhanging trees. It's about 20, 25 yards past them. All the leads went down with a relatively nice drop. But with the way that I've set the pop-ups, whatever they land on is going to be fishing effectively anyway. So. This one has clearly been found quite quick. Let's just kite him around here into these trees. There he is, another stocky I reckon. Yep, another stocky, but another bite. There he goes. There's always time for one more. How about that? Carp number three, similar size to the other two, but you know what? It's been an absolutely brilliant first session here at Acton Burnell. This fish just proves that there's always something that you can do to make it happen, whether that be fishing with zigs, solids, singles, overbait, or even moving swims. If it isn't happening, ring the changes and make it happen. Here he is, one final look at him before I slip him back to his watery home. Got about half an hour of the session left now, but if we can end on this fish, what an absolutely brilliant session it's been. I hope you've enjoyed the first episode with me down here at Acton, and I'm sure over the course of the series, there's gonna be many, many more carp caught. But what a fantastic start, and what a beautiful, beautiful lake to be fishing. <laughs>